Hello everyone, I'm Dave Christensen coming to you once again from Home and Garden 911.com. Today we're going to talk about how to read a ruler, how to use a ruler, how to take measurements, how to accurately take measurements using a ruler in fractions of an inch. That to some people might sound elementary. Uh, however, inasmuch as we all learned that skill, or we actually learned how to read a ruler, I'll put it that way, in elementary school, unless you're involved in a job or profession or trade that required the use of that skill, you're not going to remember how to do that after a while. The old adage, either use it or lose it, is alive and well in this case, as it is with so many other things. I'm a tradesman, it's a basic skill of being a tradesman of any type to be able to accurately take measurements of length. If you're a merchant or a jeweler or a baker or a programmer, nobody's gonna expect that you know how to use a tape measure accurately because you haven't had the need to use it. So, Sometimes I notice people snicker about such things, but if, if you don't know how to use a ruler and you're involved in it, if you're not a tradesman, there's no reason why you should have to know that. However, now if you own a home and you want to do some, do, you're involved in some do-it-yourself projects at home, you want to replace something or build something, or uh, put in a new window, order some new countertops, someone's going to have to take some accurate measurements in order for you to order those items, either a new window or a, a countertop or whatever it is we're talking about, a kitchen cabinet, you're going to need to be able to take accurate measurements. And even if you know how to take accurate measurements, even if you're confident that you know how to take accurate measurements, it's always a good idea to double check your own work, number one, double check it or maybe even triple check your measurements. And it's also a good idea to have someone else check your work. Get a fresh pair of eyes on that measurement and give it a sanity check, as we say. Make sure it's right, because once you order your window or your cabinet or whatever it is that needs to be ordered and prefabricated, once you order it, and if you provide the measurements, you own it. So with that, let me move on and let me show you a couple of different kinds of rulers uh, and tape measures, starting with this one. We all saw this in elementary school, didn't we? I know we did. It's a 12 inch ruler, one foot, marked off in inches. Uh, actually, this is marked off in uh, all the way down to 16th of an inch. We're all very familiar with that, I'm sure. And this is something that used to be in every household and is still in some, but they don't give them away anymore, I don't think. This one uh, I had to buy even though it says Sears on it, Sears Hardware, you'd think they would have given it to me just for the advertisement value. A yardstick is three feet long, divided up into 36 inches. This is broken down further into eighth of an inch increments. That's a yardstick. Here we have a tape measure. Tape measures come in all different kind of lengths, uh, from six feet on the low end all the way up to 100 feet. One that, you want, one that you would like to be able to carry around with you, you know, 25 feet is about the biggest one you want. This is pretty handy to have around the house. Uh, they come in different lengths, maybe uh, 12 feet, 16 feet. Uh, they also come in different widths. This one is uh, one inch wide. The shorter uh, tapes come in half inch wide uh, width, and also you can find them in three quarter inch wide widths. I like the one inch width because it's pretty stiff and you can put it right out there quite a distance before it collapses on you and I find that pretty handy. Uh, 25 foot tape measure or measuring tape is another way to say that. What else do we have? A folding rule. A folding rule is handy to have too. In fact, there's certain instances where it's handy to have both of these types. It's good to have both of them in the house because there's some things that a folding rule is good for that uh, is a little more handier to use than 
sometimes it is to use a uh, tape measure. This is a six foot long folding rule. Uh, I've seen them in eight foot lengths. I believe they're still available. Six foot is the common uh, length on these. Some six foot rulers have a uh, one end with a, excuse me, with a slider on it, which is good to take inside measurements. Like say, for example, uh, the inside measurement of a window casing. You could put that against one end of the window or one, one side of the window casing and you put this up against the other side of the window and slide that out and butt it up against it so you get a nice inside measurement accurately. That's what that's good for. So these fold up. You got to keep these, uh, these uh, joints uh, lubricated once in a while so they fold up easily. Goes right in your back pocket. Now the other thing I'll show you quickly is a meter stick. Here in the United States, we as a country have been holding these meters off at arm's length in favor of the uh, foot measurement and the yard, the yard measurement. A meter is, a, in, in, in terms of the American uh, measure, is uh, approximately 39 inches long. But a meter is broken up further into centimeters and millimeters, meaning hundreds and thousandths of a meter. Uh, and it, it, what you get is some pretty fine lines on here, which you probably can't see at that distance, but we're going to show it to you on a bench. I'm going to get down on the bench and show you the fractions of an inch. That's the challenge that everybody faces when they're uh, learning the skill of taking accurate measurements. It's not the inch increments, it's the fractions of the inch, those little marks between the inch marks. What do they mean? Well, we're going to find out in a minute. Okay, we're looking at a uh, portion of a, a tape measure and I'm going to show you the fractions of an inch. When we're talking fractions, we can talk about the parts of a fraction. Uh, the top number is always is called the numerator. The bottom number is called the denominator. You can break fractions down. I say if we're looking at the eighth, uh, f four sixteenths, you wouldn't call it four sixteenths. You could divide the numerator in half and divide the denominator in half and come up with half of four, half of four. If we're talking four sixteenths, half of four is two. Half of sixteen is eight, so it's two eighths. You can further break that down in the same manner. Divide each of those numbers in half. Uh, four sixteenths is equal to one quarter. And that's the way it would be accurately stated, although 4 sixteenths is not technically incorrect. Uh, let me show you the parts of a ruler. <clears throat> As you can see, uh, it's marked in inches and fractions of an inch. It's also marked in feet. 12 inches equals 1 foot. Uh, it's also marked uh, in this way. If you're a person engaged in framing a house, uh, the wall studs in a house are separated by a distance of 16 inches. They're put up at, on 16 inch centers, so these tape measures are often marked at, in 16 inch increments. There's the second one at 32 inches. See it's marked in red, so it's easily visible. Let's get back down here though, and I'll, uh, we'll go through these, these uh, markings. Here's your full inch mark, six inches, seven inches. Between there, you have 16 of these little short lines. I'm <clears throat> sorry for wiggling it around. Let me try and get it so you can see it here. If, if you're at all confused when you're actu in actually in, you know, trying to uh, make a measurement, there's nothing holding you back from counting these lines. Between these inch marks, there's 16 of these little short marks. And those are the 16th of an inch marks. So let's count them. There's 16 of those. There's also marked in eighths. If you need to, you know, until you learn all these different terms, you can count those marks. 16 of them between the inch marks. You measure something off as one, two, three, four, five, six sixteenths. Well, that can be broken down. When you're talking about a fraction, we talked about the denominator on the bottom and the numerator on top. 
divide each of those numbers in half, and he can, and if, if possible, he can divide them in half again. Uh, six sixteenths is not incorrect to call it out that way, but it's more typical to be called out or stated as three eighths. So seven sixteenths and one half. One half inch is equal to eight sixteenths, obviously. <clears throat> now. Let's look at the next, so you got the shortest line is a 16th increment. The next shortest line is in eighth inch increments. And there's eight of those between the full inch marks. So you got one eighth, two eighths would be equal to one quarter. Three eighths, four eighths equal to one half inch when you break it down. Five eighths, six eighths would be three quarters. And seven eighths and then a full inch. And then the next longest line you have is quarter inch. And if you'll notice, there's four of those. Four quarters makes a hole. There's one quarter. Two quarters is equal to one half inch. Three quarters. Four quarters is equal to one whole inch. It's as simple as that. And with practice, you'll get to know how to call those out accurately. And as I said, don't be afraid to count the lines because that's how we all started. And that's how we got familiar with it, and that's how you will get familiar with it too. I hope you found this video to be useful. My goal is to be useful to somebody. If you have, I'd appreciate it if you'd help me out now and exercise your clicker finger on one of the social icons that you see on the website, either the Facebook like button or one of the other social media buttons that are there that allow you to share it with others. That's the goal. Uh, if you do that, I'd really appreciate it. I appreciate you stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. If there's anything that I could help you out with, please contact me through the website here at homeandgarden911.com, and I'll see what I can do. Uh, if there's anything I know anything about, I'll let you know. And I appreciate it. I appreciate you stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you again. You take care. Dave Christensen. Home and Garden 911.com.